were go race uh, speedway go karts, being as though you, you were such a, an oval person? I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I just kind of, my like I said, my uncle um, was racing at Evergreen, so that's kind of all I really knew about. So when we went to, from the go karts, we just went straight to Evergreen and started racing um, with car stock cars so i didn't really ever you know look at a, any other series except for you know full-size stock cars but you know i'm always interested and ready to jump in somebody else's car if i can fit i'm, I'm pretty tiny but if i'm able to fit then you know i can always um get in the car or a car or whatever it is something with an engine and wheels and start driving it during the off season because you know track time is everything so absolutely it is do you know roger habick I do. Do you know, he was a mentor of yours, I think, yeah, was he? Yeah, and it's his birthday today. Yeah, so, so I think you should Roger. tell him happy birthday. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, <laughs> that is so yeah cool. I love Roger. Great guy. Now, he have is. you talked to Brittany Zamora at all? Because I know she's still doing mini stocks, but she had a whale of a season. What was that? Sorry. Uh, well, that's okay. Um, Brittany Zamora, do you know Brittany? Yeah, she. I mean, she. She had a yeah, whale of a season too. Roger's butt. Yeah. And I wish she kicked Roger's butt in Yakima. Well, well, hey, she was there, and a W is a W, is what I say. But I mean, she had a, a season kind of like you had. I mean, she's rookie of the year. She won the title at Hermiston. I mean, so um, this this supposedly guy sport. I mean, at least the women around here are are kind of getting it done. Yeah, well, it's cool. It's really cool to actually, you know, when we we look at Nicole and we look at Brittany, uh, you know, it's just cool for you and me, at least, or Brandon and Kyle, to look at, you know, us three females that, you know, we're racing the IKF Bull Cup Series, and um, now we're here and we're racing against each other, and um, it's just, it's cool to see that the Northwest racers actually are doing well in the industry, and you know, you look at Stingray, and he's doing well with his stuff. And, um, you know, it's just, it's really cool to see that us Northwest racers can compete all over the country or all over the world, in fact, um, with all these other drivers and do completely well. So it's exciting to see that not only with the females, but with other of the, the guys that we raced with in the, in the go-karts. Absolutely. And I've said this all along. I mean, we, we have drivers up here. I mean, you know, let's face. It, I mean, we don't get a lot of credit because you know it's not real big up here. But I mean, no. I mean, um, if you look at some of the guys, we, you know, you got Ron Eaton and Garrett Evans and Gary. I mean, you know, you got some guns yeah. here, you know. So it's not like we're a joke. And uh, I, I just, I think it's fantastic. So how about this? Okay, so you're doing your own marketing, and you're involved mm-hmm. in that. You take care of that. How about the car? Are you a hands-on? Uh, <laughs> kind of driver or not yet or no not really i mean i like to get my hands dirty um but i feel like a lot of the time i'm in the way like they just want to get it done um and we haven't released anything yet but i guess i can kind of announce it now um and i'm sure you know him kelly tanner Mm -hmm. he raced with garrett evans um he's going to take over my program for 2015 and um, he is just an incredibly smart guy, and he just gets things done. Like, he just, there's, like, you know, he, when he gets into the shop, like, he just goes at it. And so, like, when I get into the shop, I just, like, clean all the parts for him because he wants everything spotless. And so, I don't know. I, I, like, and then the process of, you know, just kind of, like, learning all the parts and exactly, like, knowing exactly what they do and stuff. But I'm not really like hands on, but this year I think I'm gonna have to be more hands on, especially when I have to give them feedback about what the car's doing and what adjustments we need to make and um, you know, well, last week this change didn't help, so let's make this change. Or maybe that change did help, and so let's make that a change that change, like knowing all that stuff. So um knowing, you know, when to put a stiffer right rear spring in or whatever, like stuff like that. So, um, but mechanics wise, no I'm not. Um, very involved with that, um, but I would like to be. Well, you know, I I think that's going to come. I mean, I I think ultimately it's it's going to have to. I mean, I, I think. Yeah. You know, I, I did it for ten years. Obviously, not quite at the level you did, but 
Um, I was a weekend warrior for about 10 years and built my own stuff. And, uh, you know, I'll be honest with you. Um, I couldn't read a tape measure. I mean, I, I yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it was terrible. But, you know, it's amazing what you learn when you have to learn it and when you're interested in it. And I mean, um, but the deal with Kelly Tanner, Molly, I don't know. I mean, you got to know that is I mean, Kelly Tanner is, um, I mean, he's awesome. He's no Joe. I mean, he's, yeah. I watched him the fall classic one year and he was just off the chart. So that's uh boy, that's a, that's a huge, um, game. Yeah, two-time champion in the North. Absolutely. Yeah. And back so when it was good. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. that's fantastic. Um, yeah. we're really fortunate to have him. So, um, he's been good to us and, um, hopefully we have, you know, a successful season next year because you know he's all business and when he gets to the track he doesn't want a 15 point finish you know he wants to be in the top five so um and you know his son's done really well especially last year he finished second in points and though he was only a few points away from the championship but um but i mean he's doing really well too so hopefully i can follow into his footsteps and um we'll see where it goes oh yeah that's fun. That's fantastic. Well, I mean, I know I'm no expert. I mean, I I do have quite a few years. I, I messed around on the tour for a few years. But, I mean, if I can give you anything, is the two things I would tell you are read, 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 and read, and question everything, and yeah. and be perfectly honest. I mean, you know, if you don't know, sometimes the car's better than you are, you know, and, and that's just a fact. There's nothing wrong with that. There's, I mean, it's going to happen, and... So, I mean, it, you know, everybody wants to blame the car all the time, but it, it's, um, I'll bet you it's the other way around. I'll bet you 95% of the time the car's probably better than the wheel. But still, that, yeah. that's that's fantastic. So, your plans for this season, you've got Tanner on board. And are you going to mm-hmm. do the Tri-Track series, or are you going to kind of just dabble around? What are you going to do? Yeah, we'll kind of pick and choose. Um, we're going to race a lot of evergreen again um he kind of wants me to conquer the 5-h track um and just you know the 3-h track as well but he just kind of wants me to to get a a few um you know good finishes under my belt at my home track in the late model and then um you know we'll race at Wenatchee I love Wenatchee so we'll be there um and we'll race all the big races so you know like you know, at Yakima, at Fall Classic, and um, the showdown at Evergreen, and the Apple Cup, and all that stuff. So, um, we'll be at all those places, but um, in South Sound as well. But, yeah, we'll just pick and choose. Evergreen, I don't believe, has come out with their schedule yet. Um, I think it'll come out next week sometime. So, we'll just figure out what those um, race dates are, and then we'll kind of know see how they interfere with other tracks and then we'll put our schedule together so you guys can stay tuned for that and then come watch me race this season absolutely well you know i'm i'm gonna have um i'm gonna have chris cunningham's gonna be here on the show on the 4th of february and we're gonna do an hour-long program on just evergreen and what's going on and the inside scoop so definitely want to tune in for that um yeah you know, and we've been talking about the girl and the man sport. Well, I'm telling you right now, I'm looking at this chat deal, and, and these guys are talking about if they've got an extra car for you to run because there's a big race coming up at the end of January, the BK7, the Buda Kinzer Memorial, and they're cool. talking about would you drive it if they got you one? Yeah, if I can fit into it. Well, they'll... I, mean, I have to have a lot of custom things, but, yeah, I'll, if I can fit in it, I'll drive it. Let me know. All right, guys. There, there you go. Molly, Molly Helmet says she's she's in. So Chris Gibb, um, we gotta have something for. Her. So you know, you know Andrew Zimmer. I do. Yeah, he won his first uh, dirt race down there at Salem this last weekend. His second time in the car. Oh, cool. Yeah, driving for Phil Fowl. So, how about the guy that won the summer? Uh, he won the classic this summer. He was from Canada. Yeah. Haley. Yeah, under, Haley. he was a go-karter, too. Big go-karter up there, right? Up in Canada? Um, I thought he was a, a Rotax not, guy. I I don't know his background. I probably should, but... No, I just I, I, I just yeah, thought maybe you knew him, but... Yeah, I don't know. I mean, he might be. I don't know. 
Yeah, well, well study up on that, but yeah, I have no idea. Pretty cool though. Uh, I, I think he was. I think it was. You know, I don't know much about the Canadian stuff either, but nonetheless, an, another go kart. I mean, because Schreiber's doing a nice job out there too, isn't he? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he is. Yeah, for his rookie season, he did really well. Yeah, these guys are. I felt like, and and when I look back, like my rookie season in many stock. Well, not really many. And well, yeah, many stocks, but. Let's look at late models. Like, I felt like my rookie season was the easiest year because you're going into it and you're not expecting yourself to do well. You're just like, hey, I'm just going to go out there. I'm going to finish races. I'm going to do all that stuff. I'm going to have fun. And you're not really, like, looking at the big picture of, like, winning races. So, like, for me, like, um, my rookie of the year or my rookie year, I won rookie of the year for, you know, the state of Washington. I got to go back to Charlotte and stuff. And it was a huge honor, but, like, that year, it really didn't, you know, it wasn't a big deal to me because it just seemed so easy because my rookie season, like I said, it doesn't, it doesn't, you don't have any, like, really high goals um, for yourself that you've set. And then you go, you know, you end your two or your rookie season, and then you go into your, your sophomore season, and you're expecting all these big things. And a lot of the time, it doesn't work out that way, and that's exactly what it didn't work out for me in any way, shape, or form in 2013. And um, and so, yeah, just, did I say I, I won the 2013 Rookie of the Year? Because I won the 2012 Rookie of the Year. Well, that's all but, right. So, but, yeah, it, I just felt like my rookie season was the easiest. And I think that, you know, looking at Brittany, maybe, I don't know, I can't put words, words into her mouth, but, you know, rookie seasons just seem really easy for – um, a lot of these drivers because you just don't really expect anything big to come out of it. Well, I can tell you this. And a wise man once told me, a famous guy around here by the name of J.J. Safino, and he built cars for, like, Derek Cope and Wilbur Bruce and, I mean, some of the standout guys. He said, you know, it racing is a do-paying process, and everybody's going to pay it. I mean, it, you don't get out of it, and no matter how good you are, how much money you got – you're going to pay the dues. You might not pay them the first year, although you might say maybe you started, but you're going to pay them. I mean, whether it's down the road or at the beginning or wherever, there's going to be that time you're going to pay them. But he also said, one day, if you take your fingers and mesh them together, you know, he says everything falls into place, and you learn once you learn how to win, then um, I never understood that until you win one, and then you kind of go, yeah, you know, um, mm -hmm. I think I get it. So, yeah, I mean, you, you, you are on your way, kid. I, I'm, you know, for me, it's just exciting. You know, here I am announcing the, the go kart races and getting to watch you race go karts, and then boom, you're you're up here doing the late model thing. I mean, it's cool for me to say, you know, man, I used to, I used to announce our go kart races. You know, no, I mean, it's kind of like a I little know, celebrity to me. It. I hated it because. I would come off the track, and a lot of the time, like, I would, like, the times that I wasn't doing so hot, I'd be in the back, I'd blow off the scales, and I'd be like, dang it, Terry's there, and I'd put my head down, I'm like, I really don't want to talk to him, I don't want to talk to him about, like, how bad I was, and then, you know, I'd talk to you, and I'd just be like, okay, I just got to go for it, but a lot of the time, I would try to, just, like, beeline it to the pit. And be like, Dad, yeah, like, don't let me talk to him. He's like, Molly, it's part of the sport. Like, you need to tell him. Like, you know, you need to talk to him. That's just part of the sport. So I learned to, like, like you. I mean, I never really hated you, but I was just like, don't talk to me. I just had a crappy race. But, I mean, it's cool to see that, um, you know, you're doing what you like. And and you're you're following my career. And it's good to see that you're supporting me still. And um, so I'm really fortunate to, to have met you and to still be in contact with you. Well, you know, and I don't think I was, I, I don't, I, I tried not to ever be negative there, even if, even if you're, you know, no. 15th out yeah, of 15th, I try to keep yeah. it positive, but you know, honestly, yeah, it was a way for, <laughs> for you to practice. That's what I'm really the whole deal. Know, people don't get that. Yeah. yeah I mean, that's what he told me. He was like, Molly, it's just practice, but it, it was always fun to like grow up and then. Uh, when I, you know, when I was 14 or so, and then you could listen to all like the mini max kids on the microphone and, you know, them being all shy and, you know, saying one word answers and stuff. It was really cute to see, you know, kind of where I was at. And, um, now I'm just, you know, you can't shut me up now. <laughs>
<laughs> Boy, hey, I, that that's cool. I mean, I you know, I mean, man, you you hated me. I, I, wow, I never knew I that. I didn't. I didn't hate you. I that get it. I'm just kidding.